Hi, I'm Mayor Thomas McDermott, Jr., Mayor of the City of Hammond, Indiana, here to talk to you about the movie A Christmas Story, written by Mr. Gene Shepard. Gene Shepard's movie originally aired in 1983. 25 years later, we're celebrating the, the success of this story. Gene Shepard, Hammond, and A Christmas Story have a lot in common because he grew up in the Hessville neighborhood of our great city. He attended a school called Warren G. Harding Elementary School, which is still standing. He graduated from Hammond High School in 1939. That school is also still standing. He went on to become a famous radio personality in the 1950s, 1960s, and 1970s. Oftentimes during his radio shows, he would talk and long about the days, his childhood days growing up in Hammond, Indiana. He then went on to write many stories, formed a book called In God We Trust, All Others Pay Cash. The stories in this book went on to become what we now call the movie, A Christmas Story. Hammond is very proud of Mr. Gene Shepard, obviously, for his great accomplishments. In 1981, Hammond awarded Mr. Gene Shepard with the Hammond Achievement Award, the highest award that the city could give to one of its residents. Then again, in 2003, we opened up a community center in his old neighborhood called the Gene Shepard Center. It was estimated last year on TBS that more than 45.5 million Americans watched this movie, A Christmas Story. Since 1997, TBS has aired this movie continuously for 24 hours during the holiday season. It's something that Hammond's very proud of, and I'm very glad that you're watching the show, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. It began in the 1930s on Cleveland Street in Hammond, when Gene Shepard was a boy. All Shepard wanted for Christmas was a Red Ryder BB gun with a compass in the stock. The story quickly grew into a phenomenon, and the phenomenon is the movie A Christmas Story. The movie co-written by Gene Shepard was based on his stories as a boy growing up in Hammond. Uh, he talks about the traditional minor pleasures of growing up, and uh, he depicts a typical family life and relationships, the kind mother, the annoying kid brother, the father who's a bit distant and stern, but who comes through in the end with a present Ralphie wants so badly. Shepard was an author, actor, and a radio and TV personality. When I was going to college, uh, a fellow student uh, suggested that I'd be interested in this fascinating guy who talked on the radio. You never knew what he was going to talk about. From night to night or from minute to minute, his storytelling and commentary, uh, what I like to say is it constantly tickled your mind with a uh, fascinating idea. Uh, he was intellectually stimulating. Uh, uh, he was always unpredictable. He, he exaggerated and he was funny. And from night to night, it was a totally new uh, experience. And uh, it was very, very entertaining. And uh, w uh, when I began listening to Shepard, he, he did it in his own uh, way. He did it in a, usually in a uh, more subtle and uh, quiet kind of way, but he made a lot of comments about, uh, gee, look, this is the way people actually act, isn't it? Uh, what he liked to say is that uh, people were full of what he referred to as foibles. And that doesn't mean horrible characteristics. There's sort of a, a little bit of humor and, and caring and, and actually love for humanity in the imperfections that uh, he found in people. And he liked to describe those strange things that people would sometimes do and, and suggest that they were both uh, not quite the way an intelligent person should act, and, and yet they were sort of amusing and, and lovable uh, quite often also. And I, I found that uh, rather touching, and uh, he was always funny, as I say. But is most famous for his Midwestern tales in A Christmas Story. The movie, co-written by Gene Shepard, was based on his stories as a boy growing up in Hammond. No, you know it. Uh, it was a small movie on a very small budget, and uh, you know you just kind of hope that it gets a theatrical release, and you just see what happens. You know, none of us knew 
what was going to be up on that screen when we were shooting it. That's kind of, you know, I mean, today it's a little different with, um, you know, the big budgeted, ultra big movies and all that. Uh, back then it was just we were making a little $4 million film and, you know, hopefully everybody will be happy with the outcome. Well, one of the incredible things that I find is that over um, 50 million people last year watched at least a part of it during the uh, 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 Christmas uh, 24 hours beginning uh, Christmas Eve at 8 p.m. And uh, that, that's, that's a really startling figure. Characters in the movie can also be traced back to Hammond. Jack Flickinger, the inspiration for Flick, lived on Cleveland Street in Hammond. Uh, my father and Gene attended Warren G. Harding School at the same time, probably in the same grade, I think. Um, and they knew each other as neighborhood kids. They probably did play together, especially on, you know, pick up baseball, the sandlot kind of stuff that people did back then. Um, I don't think, though, that they were very close friends. Dad actually would say those things um, later when Gene became famous and the book was written um, and God We Trust All Others Pay Cash. Um, Dad would always just kind of say, you know, they never were that, that close of a friend and he didn't think that highly of Gene either. I think he was pretty tickled at first to find out about the book and kind of being based at the tavern. Uh, but then he was kind of disappointed at how Gene portrayed Flick. Well, Dad felt like he was, he made Flick um, look like a dummy, like a dummy, and, and Dad was not a dummy, and he didn't appreciate being portrayed as the kid who stuck his tongue to the, to the light pole when, you know, he swears up and down he never did that. So, and he wouldn't, you know, he, he was being made fun of for things he didn't even do. I think he was born in East Chicago, but moved to uh, Hessville area pretty young. I know he went to elementary school in Warren G. Harding School in Hessville, and his uh, father owned Flix Tap, opened it probably right after the Prohibition, I'm guessing. The original location was the 165th and Kennedy Avenue. Started by my grandfather, Noble Flickinger. Noble and Martha Flickinger opened the tavern. I know my dad worked there um, in high school. He worked cleaning, cleaning the tavern. Dad would usually hang out, and I can remember going in as a young girl and getting uh, root beer on tap and just uh, sitting in the sunlight by the windows and dad reading the paper and mostly I remember uh, getting to decorate for Christmas. Cam Lan Chinese Restaurant opened in 1938 at 5256 Holman Avenue. Um, when I first saw the movie, um, I thought maybe it was based uh, in Hammond. Uh, there were just all the similarities. And when I saw the uh, department store in the movie, um, it did remind me of Goblatz. Goblatz had the big window displays um, with the Christmas scene and um, so did the, the uh, department store in the movie, and um, then the school, uh, Harding School, was similar to. Camlan was um, the only Chinese restaurant in the area, um, and it was open during that time, during that time period, and um, it was open, I guess, when Gene Shepard was a junior in high school, and then, um, I guess, the the similarity between the restaurant in the movie and the real Camland restaurant. When I saw the restaurant, uh, that did make me think of Camland. Maybe my dad might have named it Golden Street, maybe because of like a, a golden future, good future, and because that was the custom for the uh, men uh, to come over to the States to, you know, quote unquote, look for their fortune, you know, make their fortune. So that might have been the reason why he named it Golden Street. It was tradition to serve the duck um, with the head on. Um, however, my dad would, you know, aim to please. If the customer did not want the head on, he would chop it off. Paul Schwartz, or Schwartz, lived a few blocks away on Arizona Avenue 
and Mrs. Shields, the teacher in the movie, lived on Lawndale in Hammond. Warren G. Harding Elementary School in Hammond was the grammar school where Shepard attended as a boy, and also the location for the famous tongue on the flagpole scene in the movie. Well, I think as time goes on and people look back uh, at the 20th century and uh, the people that have come out of the region, um, Gene Shepard will be amongst the top um, personalities and also, can I use the word legend, um, because he, he is a legend, he will be seen even more as a legend because people like Gene Shepard are rare people. If we can have the, uh, the, the record that they created, uh, the, the, their viewpoint of, of a certain time and place, um, uh, and not only that, but a way to make their uh, points of view universal, which is why I think uh, a lot of people, most people, um, love the Christmas story because we all can relate to it. And um, uh, I think that uh, history will just become kinder and kinder to Gene Shepard. And I, I'm sure a hundred years from now when people look back at this era, uh, Shepard will naturally rise to the top uh, along with several other legends that we have. Uh, Gene Shepard is, is definitely uh, a star for our region and uh, he will be seen as a star and a legend for centuries to come. Residents are able to visit the Gene Shepherd Community Center in the Hessville neighborhood of Hammond. There is a wall dedicated to Shepherd's life and accomplishments. The Community Center opened in 2003 and hosts many events throughout the year. This November, the city of Hammond will hold events celebrating Shepard's Christmas classic, A Christmas Story, which is also the 25th anniversary of the movie. The city is proud to have such a celebrated author from this region.